I'm going to jump right into and give you exactly what you need to know about the Windows Embedded Standard 7 and Windows Embedded Standard 8. We call it WES, the WES family of products. I'm going to show you the toolkit and the IBW, the Image Build Wizards, kind of give you a, an overview of what the differences are. This will get you uh, running really quickly and get you off the ground and let you build an image really quickly. Perfect for beginners that haven't touched this product before. What you're looking at here on my screen is the actual toolkit. If you bought a WES 7 toolkit or uh, with WES 8 it's free um, and we shipped you the disks, they'll look like this. There'll be three disks. This is showing the uh, again the 7 um, but where to look is in this area here. You can see that the number one disk is a toolkit. Number two is a 32-bit um, bootable image. It's called an IBW, an image build wizard. It's totally bootable. And then lastly disk number three is a 64-bit bootable disk. Um, the other place you can get these products is in an MSDN subscription. So I'm going to show you that here. What you're looking at here is I'm logged into my MSDN subscription and it doesn't matter whether it's pro or premium. If you come up and you search on Windows Embedded Standard 7 or 8, you're going to get a listing like this. And what you'll look for again is the toolkit or the 64-bit image or the 32-bit the image. and um, if you want to hit the ground running really fast, what you'd do is you'd burn one of these disks here and then throw it on the machine, boot on it, and do an install of, of Windows, a 7 or 8. And then, it, but the problem is it doesn't let you customize a whole lot. Um, if you want to customize the image, then you're going to want to take this toolkit and install it on a PC that's already running Windows, which I've done here and I'm going to show you guys. So let me minimize these out of the way. And you can actually install the WES 7 toolkit and the WES 8 toolkit on the same computer. They don't conflict with each other. And uh, they're both called the ICE, uh, Image Configuration Editor. And I actually had to add WES 8 and WES 7 to them to, to tell. You can kind of tell the icons are different. I'm going to launch the WES 7 one first. And then I'm going to launch the WES 8 one. And uh, we'll be able to uh, show you how to use them, but also the differences, the slight differences between the two. So starting with the 7, what you got to do is you've got to open up a distribution share. That's basically all the bits of Windows 7. And so it says to right click and select a distribution share. And in this case, um, It's actually under the DSSP1 folder, which is in the Windows Embedded Standard 7 folder. It should default to there. And then if I select that one and hit open, it's going to open up that distribution share. On Windows 8, you can see they call it a distribution share. On Windows 8, they call it a catalog and I already have it open, but um, you, can, you can select the catalog, I already have it selected. From there, you have to um, go and start an answer file. So with Windows 7, WES 7, they call it an answer file. And uh, it says right click and do a new one. And it immediately dumps in the core, the actual bare, bare minimum that it requires to run WES 7. It even gives you a footprint estimate, 550 megabytes. Has to have that. That's the smallest footprint it can possibly have. It's going to require a few other little things, but those are the bare minimums. With WES 8, they call it a config file and they let you name it. And uh, similar, it drops in the core. It doesn't give you a size in this area though. It's a little, little different. That was removed for some reason. So we're good to go with a WES 7 base core image and a WES 8 base core image. From over here, one of the things I like to do with WES 7, because there's three different flavors of WES 7, is underneath products, sorry, under feature packs, under SKU compliance, they list the three flavors of WES 7. And if you want to make sure that you're not adding, uh, if you're trying to go with the E, which is the cheaper version, and not the P, then what you can do, um, use, I'm going to double click that and it added it over here. Now in a minute I'll show you how that comes into play, but ultimately that will keep me from adding anything into the image that shouldn't be. Um, and I'll show you how that works. The other thing you can do is under the feature packs is you can add all the, you can go through all of these and pick out the different features which I'm not going to do that right now because it takes too long 
But one of the, as an example, I'll use networking. So wireless networking. I'm going to double click, and it added wireless networking over here. Just want to make sure my device has wireless networking. Otherwise, most of all the basic Windows 7 drivers um, are in there. If for for things that are typically not in the Windows 7 driver image, that's what this out of box driver section is. And they they have some out of box drivers like for Intel Atom and some other platforms that you can add in. Um, and you might have to go get your own custom drivers depending on your device and you can add those in here as well and then drop them into your image so now I have an answer file this tells the Windows um, installation this is exactly what I want and what I'm going to do now is I need to validate it make sure I've got everything I need but before I do that I want to put in the touch screen which is under user interface tablet support so I'm going to double click and put tablet support. I, I'm doing that because I know that that's a feature that's only in the P version of Web 7. So it'll give me, and I've selected the E compliant, so we'll see how that plays into effect. So now I'm going to run validate. Down here in this area, it's going to tell you what's wrong. And what you have to do is you have to double click on each one and then go through the list. And read carefully, because you can see that it says requires exactly one of. So it means that, that means I need to choose one or the other. In this case, I want the Windows boot environment exactly one of. Do I want the branded screens or do I want unbranded? Exactly one of. Windows, uh, the, the command prompt shell or the Windows shell? I'm going to go with the Windows shell on that one. Exactly one of a bootable USB stack or the standard Windows USB stack? I want a bootable one. And then I need a language pack. It's just one of again. I'm going to hit OK. You can see that now marks that line off. Now this one here has to do with that WES 7e compliance SKU and it tells me that I, we have a confliction and it's telling me that the tablet PC support is is conflicting so I need to remove that and it tells me it's resolved the next one says because I added probably because I added the wireless networking that I also need to add these um, and I also these are optional anytime you see optional that just means have a look you don't need it but you might want to add some of this networking stuff I'm good without it the last one here, um, I, I, again, well, that was for the tablet PC support, which I've now removed. So I'm not even going to deal with that one right now. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to come back up here under the tablet PC support, and I'm actually going to delete that out. Then I'm going to check it again. So I'm going to hit validate. Now, because we added a bunch of networking stuff, there's some more stuff. And I can go through every one of these, but there's a quick way, too. I can go add required packages. And now it threw everything in that I needed gives me one more warning and with that warning what I'm going to do is I'll double click it and it tells me that I actually need to set this particular value to 15,000 so I'm going to come up here I'm going to hit this one I'm going to type in 15,000 click somewhere else that one's good to go the rest of these are all optional but I'm going to validate one more time so the rest of these are all optional uh, no other warnings so I'm good to go with that one so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to save the answer file put it somewhere where, where I know like the desktop as you can see I've, I've done some other ones here so this is a WES 7 E test answer file I'm done with this tool so I'm going to exit out and let's look at WES 8 real quick so WES 8 I've added the core you can go into features and again pick and choose everything you want and go through the same things there is no SKU compliance with WES 8 because there is only one SKU so you, you don't have to worry about um, adding you know the wrong things you can throw everything in here um, or you can again pick and choose so in this case I'm, I'm not going to go through adding much stuff I've got the core stuff for WES 8 I'm good to go I'm going to go ahead and validate it it, it tells me I, I do need a couple more things yep a language pack and branded or unbranded screen. So in this case, I'll go with the branded screen. I'm going to check it again just in case that changed anything. I'm good to go. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to save the config file because with WES 8 they call it a config file. And now I'm done with my tool. And from there, what you're going to do is with those other disks that we had, the IBW disk, take a look at them now the 64-bit or the 32-bit, you'll take that to your device and then uh, um, the the answer file and the config file, you'll save those to a USB stick and put the, take that with you to the machine, boot on one of these disks, 
the very first thing it asks you is do you have a config file or an answer file and if so it lets you browse to the USB memory stick and point it to that file and then it'll do the install based on all the choices you made in the toolkit I'm, I hope to show you guys another video that shows you through walks you through the installation of the IBW disk but from now this is the actual toolkit thanks for watching any questions email me ken